Hey, what's up guys? MKBHD here at Samsung's Unpacked in San Francisco for a first hands-on and this look at the brand new Galaxy Z Flip. So, we knew this phone was coming. We knew we were gonna get a vertical folding phone from Samsung of some kind. There was plenty of leaks out there and then we finally got it. And now that I've had my hands on, my feelings are very mixed, very mixed. So I've held this phone now in my hands for maybe half an hour and I've had fleeting moments with it on and off for a bit longer than that. And on one hand, it feels like it's easily the most polished and mature folding phone yet. But on the other hand, it still has a long way to go to be something I would actually buy. And it still has its flaws. So let me just start with the specs right off the top. So it's got flagship internals, unlike some other folding phones. Well, I mean, unlike the Moto Razr, let's just call it what it is. I'm gonna be comparing it a lot to the other folding flagship phone. Uh, the Razr does not have flagship specs, but the Z Flip, it does. It's got the Snapdragon 855 Plus, eight gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigs of storage, and a combined 3,300 milliamp hour battery, which is okay. Uh, and it still has wireless charging, which is nice. And you've got dual cameras here, one 12 megapixel standard and a 12 megapixel ultra wide. These specs on paper pretty much wipe the floor with the Razer, I'll just say it. I mean, you can't help but compare the two. Maybe leave a thumbs up on this video if you wanna see a separate dedicated Razer versus Z Flip video. Either way, playing with the Z Flip, you can see they've made some different design and material choices that make it a very different phone. The main one being the screen. So this is now an ultra thin folding glass, not plastic. And you can feel that right away when swiping around and using the screen. It's not a soft plastic that you can almost literally dig your fingernails into. It's glass. So that's a great advancement. It's hard. It's a 6.7 inch 21 by nine display, uh, 1080p OLED, 60 Hertz. And it has that hole punch cut out for the selfie camera up top instead of a notch and much thinner bezels. So all these things make it feel like more of a Samsung flagship than any other folding phone. But the crease, the crease to me is still major. I saw it from many different angles. I used it for many different things and there's just no way around it. It's a very noticeable crease. I would say it's better than the original Galaxy Fold, but here's the thing. Since this is a vertical folding phone and the same thing goes for the Razer, because it's vertical folding, the crease is across the center here. And that means every time you use the phone, anytime you do any scrolling or any sort of using the UI, you're constantly moving over that center crease and you're constantly, constantly feeling the center of that fold with your finger. So unlike a horizontal folding phone, you really notice it a lot here and you can feel it when your finger swipes over it over and over and over again. Now, I still prefer it to the Razer's plastic display because that one feels a bit more delicate and softer, but I'm not gonna sit here and tell you the crease is gone or anything. I mean, you can clearly see it. And then when we close the phone, the front cover display is the other different choice. So they've basically just put a tiny one inch 300 by 112 display on the outside of the fold. And really all it's good for is the time and seeing a little preview of your notifications. Some people like me may be fond of a little extra functionality on the outside like the Razer has. So you can actually go into your notifications and read stuff like texts and emails. Uh, but in the Z Flip, it'll, it'll just tell you, you got a text or who it's from. And really if you wanna open it or actually do anything, you have to unfold the phone. But also uh, if you double tap the power button, you can actually open the, the primary camera and take selfies with it and use that one inch cover display as like the world's most hilariously tiny viewfinder. It's there, it's fine, you can use it I guess, but I probably won't. I think most people will take selfies with the normal selfie camera because of the final major design update, the hinge. I, I don't think this can be overstated, hinges are extremely important for folding phones and, and learning from your past hinges to make better ones is gonna be something we start to see. And I think Samsung learned a lot already from their first gen Galaxy Fold and the things that went wrong with it. And we can already see that here in this second generation hinge. The Z Flip has a really good hinge. I'd say the best hinge I've seen yet. It's nearly gapless and Samsung says it's put a bunch of small fibers, like a, like a brush inside this hinge to give it even more protection from anything accidentally getting inside. Uh, it still might not pass the J-Rig everything, pour a handful of pebbles directly onto the phone test, but it is another step in the right direction. And then the hinge weight is also really nice. 
I feel like I could open this phone with one hand much more easily, and it's a three-step hinge, meaning you can fold the phone halfway like a little laptop and set it down on a flat surface, and it'll just sit that way, letting you use half the screen at a time. And then they've even built in some of their apps to take advantage of this, including the camera and the gallery and even Google's Duo video calls. Now, I didn't get an answer on if this is an open API and other developers can you know, change their apps to use this Fold 2, but it would seem like a no-brainer. Like taking advantage of having a hinge that's this impressive and keeps the phone this well-balanced from tipping over would be great. So that's three major ways that the Z Flip is differentiating itself and is in a lot of ways better than some other folding phones. The cover display on the outside, it's different. The specs and the build quality and that hinge. And then some other small things I noticed, uh, the fingerprint reader is on the power button right below the volume buttons. So kind of like they did with the Galaxy S10e, I like that. Uh, and no, there is no headphone jack. Sorry if you thought there would be one. And the bezels are pretty thick at first, but the more you use the phone, the more you realize they're necessary for protecting the glass when you close it. Like the screen sits just barely sub flush. So when you close the phone, you're not slamming glass into glass, you're closing bezel on bezel. So yeah, overall, I'm very curious to see what you guys think of the Z Flip. To me, it's really fascinating, but it has to be a little more than just fascinating to be worth $1,380. We thought it might be a little bit cheaper. Those rumors of it undercutting the Razer started to bubble up, but no, it's 1,380 bucks. But I still can't wait to review this thing. I wanna see what the battery life is like with the 3,300 milliamp hour battery and a giant screen. I wanna see how the durability and that hinge last over time. These are some things you don't get to figure out just by using it for a couple minutes. But I don't know, I'm just, I'm glad folding phones are actually evolving as fast as they can. Maybe, who knows, in three or four generations we'll have the incredibly sleek, thin, bezel-less, 120 hertz, awesome folding devices, iPad size screens in our pockets. That's all a big maybe, but that's what I hope we're working towards. Either way, thanks for watching this first hands-on and impressions of the Z Flip, and if you wanna check out the other videos of the Galaxy S20 lineup that also just got revealed today, that's linked below the like button as well. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.